Adrian, this week you've been participating in this Future of Pastoralism conference here in Addis Ababa. What are the main take-home messages? Well, I think the main, the main fundamental uh, take-home messages is that there is a future for, for pastoralism in, uh, in Africa, and particularly, obviously, from my perspective, uh, based here in Ethiopia, in the Horn of Africa. I think that's refreshing to hear. I think we've got good uh, research findings to prove that. Uh, we've got uh, uh, new policy initiatives which are also beginning to emerge uh, from, the, from the AU down to, down to country level. We've seen uh, a number of ministers of state uh, from South Sudan, from Kenya, from uh, even here from Ethiopia, uh, that are been uh, that have come from a pastoral background, and we're seeing uh, we're seeing. I think we're basically seeing that uh, uh, all 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 the indicators are that there is a, a future of, uh, for, for pastoralism in in the Horn of Africa in particular. Although I think that we probably would need to qualify that and say that uh, that the future of pastoralism looks like it's going to be the future of different forms of pastoralism, uh, and some groups are going to uh, come out as, as as more as winners, maybe more more commercialised, more commercial systems of uh, pastoralism. Others are going to be more diversified, uh, and obviously there's going to be some losers as well. Uh, and we've also looked in this conference at some of those loser groups, uh, and and how possibly through various forms of social protection or alternative livelihoods or different types of support, uh, they may transition into livelihoods that are, are, are very little uh, in, in terms of connection with, with livestock. What implications do you see for FAO for this type of uh, the messages coming out? Well, FAO, we here in the Horn of Africa, we've got uh, we're very active in in the, in the pastoral areas, uh, primarily uh, through the uh, through what's what's been historically called the emergencies part of uh, of, 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 of FAO. So involved around livestock uh, in times of drought, and uh, that's been one of the key one of the key areas of, of work, and and a whole raft of, of interventions around supporting uh, pastoral livelihoods uh, during times of drought so uh, whether it be animal health or feed supplementation or commercial slaughter destocking or restocking after drought that's been a, 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 a main part of our work but there are other parts of FAO's work in the region that are, are involved in transboundary diseases uh, and, and marketing initiatives which are more more long term and I think what FAO is in the process now is of, of transitioning from just uh, uh, the bulk of its work being around emergencies to taking on these new approaches to disaster risk management and disaster risk reduction. So transitioning the short-term emergency programming to more longer-term and uh, certainly middle-term uh, programming, which, which looks not just at an immediate response to a drought or, or a hazard, but also to trying to strengthen pastoralism over, over, the, long, over the longer term. You used to work for Save the Children, which was quite a different organisation. What, what kind of issues do you see not represented in a conference like this, which is rather academic in nature? Well, there's a couple of things noted uh, with concern that, that we could have perhaps looked at in a little, a little bit different. The first one was around uh, the, the issue of gender. Uh, and I think that uh, gender throughout the conference was uh, was was perhaps one of the weaker one of the weaker aspects, and and maybe something in the next uh, next conference that we could that we could look at um, a little bit more. Uh, the other area was was identified by by several other of the participants. Was uh, when I was in Save the Children, we uh, we had a strong program around natural resource management, and uh, we were looking at the links between natural resource management, uh, livestock productivity and obviously milk for children so there was a kind of a there was a kind of a natural flow from looking at the natural resource base how to improve rent range land management uh, strengthen range land management institutions uh, increase livestock productivity and then there would be benefits from and i think that one of the areas where i felt there was a perhaps we could again focus on another in another conference would be this whole uh, productivity issue uh, the productivity of the rangelands, particularly under changing and, and maybe more fragmented systems, how we can look at rangeland productivity, how we can therefore increase livestock productivity and therefore be benefits from children both in terms of milk production but also in terms of sales uh, and household income. So those are two, I think the two areas where I think we could have perhaps spent a little bit more, maybe a little bit more technical focus around productivity and then obviously the agenda issue. Last thing. Ilri is International Research Centre. What do you see as the implications of this conversation for a place like Ilri, based in Ethiopia, surrounded by pastoralists, but some people say not really working on pastoral issues? Well, I've just had a conversation with an Ilri colleague. Uh, I mean, the first thing is I would call Ilri, uh, and they're certainly colleagues, and uh, we've had, I've had lots of conversations with people from Ilri uh, over the years, both in terms of them helping uh, support ideas that we've been trying to develop in, say, the children. But now, uh, I think one of the areas that, that, that I think I 
I can see as a, a particular activity is as there's a team from Kenya that's involved in uh, global climate change and uh, we were just talking about the possibilities of how we could do a partnership around um, around rangeland systems, um, grassland systems, uh, carbon measurements and this whole business about moving moving grasslands to some sort of uh, payment for environmental services. And I, I can see some sort of partnership emerging with, with, with the Ilri there. And I would you know, value the opportunity. I mean, Ilri's got a very strong uh, research uh, uh, capacity. Uh, in FAO, we, we're much more uh, uh, in, operational and we're involved in the delivery of projects and, and policy issues. Uh, so I think that that relationship between Ilri and, and FAO could be could be very strong and very uh, very positive.